You guys need to move back towards Dimitri. Is that enough? Yeah. Okay. One of the impact lifts I want to show. So I want to show two things. First, I want to show a choke, how, how to grip right, my, the way I like to grip in a choke, and then I want to show a wrist lock. So I see a lot of people, they're trying to get a grip to do the, uh, to do some kind of choke. They do this part right, and then they try and get extra, they try and reach extra deep, and their palm starts to curl, point away from them as they try and get behind the neck. The thumbs comes up, the pinky points down, the palm's pointing away, and then they end up with the flat of their arm against the neck right here, even though it's, it's deep. What I like to do about deep is, of course, you're always using this to assist. But I want to come up here, so my blade's kind of touching, but I'm going to keep shooting up straight. I'm going to loosen his gi like this, and I'm going to make a proper fist. So really, when I'm, when I'm going deep, I'm trying to loosen things up so that I can grab a grip of his lapel and make a good fist first, and then see how tight. Maybe I need to make a little bit of adjustment and regrip and tighten up. I want my, this blade to be underneath his neck, and I want to, I want to Face put up the palm to me, and I want to curl my pinky finger in towards the inside of my hand, like this. So boom. So this is a good choking grip right here. I got deep, I punched forward, I loosened things up, I got my grip, and I made a fist before I came back down, and then shoved my, my forearm into his chest. Now I'm ready for a nice choke right here. I keep my, my wrist nice and firm and straight. Okay? Um, right, now onto my wrist lock. A lot of people, so a lot of times I'll get the set up just by coming over the shoulder with the calf and I have sort of the crook of my hip behind his tricep here so his, his elbow is pretty stabilized. I do a lot of these wrist locks with side control too, there's a lot of different ways. What I want to go over is how I actually get the wrist itself. A lot of people just grab the wrist and they pull straight down until the wrist finally collapses. Other people they kind of try and pull the hag on, hold the, hand, hold the thing. They want to pull perpendicular to the forearm because that does give you the most strength to, to break the wrist. But then there's a lot of movement in the, in, the, in the forearm itself. What I like to do is come underneath this forearm here and grab my own wrist and go palm to palm with the, with the cross hand. All right? So now I can pull perpendicular while holding his forearm still. And I can use this, my hand sort of as extra lever too. And I can always keep my, the direction that I pull perpendicular to his hand as I go here and I break it down like this. Okay, so even if I'm trying to get an arm bar, I can't get it, I'm gonna come in here, boom. If he has his hand over, that's fine. No matter how he's gripping here, I'm gonna reach under, palm to palm, grab my own wrist with the, with the other hand, and break it down like this, okay? Try and lock my feet or just keep this, this cap over the top of his shoulder. I really want, I'm really trying to isolate his tricep and keep his elbow still here. Uh, this is similar to what I do in mount as well. So down here. Even in mount, all I have to do is come up a little bit higher, turn this knee a little bit. A lot of times I do it with one legged, sort of grapevine here like this. So I have his elbow somewhat isolated. I come over with this hand, palm to palm with this, and just curl it in like that. All right, next.